hedgehogs, well, I feed them cat food, um, chicken, all light meats. Uh, the prefer the light meats to the dark meats, but no fish ones because that tends to upset the tummies. So I feed them the wet cat food and dry cat biscuits as well. They have that every day, and also some light meal worms. Um, and this is what I feed them on. Also, you can give them treats. I mean, anybody that only is looking after one or two, you could give them, you know, little bits of only tiny bits of cheese because, as you know, you must never ever give hedgehogs milk. Um, it will make the mill, but it will actually kill them eventually. If uh, if you were to feed, give them milk every day, it would actually kill them. But you can give them a tiny little bit of cheese as a treat. Um, they're like peanuts, but you must crush them. If you feed hedgehogs peanuts, please crush them first, because the size of the or the shape of the peanut can wedge in the roof of the mouth of the hedgehog, and it would stop them eating. So you crush them first. Um, so digestive biscuits, banana, sultanas, the like, uh, grapes, um, oh gosh, all sorts. Well, these are just treats, but as I say, I feed them cat food. But in the wild, that's different. It's the slugs, snails, worms, beetles, spiders, um, unfortunately, baby frogs sometimes. But, you know, that's the sort of thing they eat in the wild. No, you're all welcome to come and see around my hospital and see what I do okay. and see my little patients. This is the part, main part of the uh, hospital. Um, I can have up to 50, 60 in here um, at any one time. Then I have a shed that's, uh, that I don't have so many in there. There's my bedroom that's usually full all winter. Uh, but in the house downstairs, I have my... Um, my most serious cases like my intensive care units it's when the the most injured ones when they first come in i need to be watching them all the time um because when i was sort of talking about maggots sometimes you can't see them and you've got to be able to look and notice things like just this itching and you look and you can find pockets of maggots so you can't just put them in here and not be able to see them you've got to be able to see them all the time so but this is the main part um, I like them to come in here once they start getting better, they come in here. As I say, because I have so many, my back bedroom is full, my shed's always full, and, um, and as I was saying, the intensive care ones are always in the house. They're in the room, the dining room, <laughs> in the hallway, <laughs> they're everywhere. I've started 15 years ago, and I've been at Hull Animal Welfare a lot longer than that. And what happened, the hedgehogs were coming into the welfare place, well, it's not suitable. You've got to be with them 24 hours a day, some days a week. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I ended up with five tiny hoglets, and it went on from there. And now I have usually up to 100 at uh, any one time. I am down to 50 because I've released just recently 66. So I am, you know, I've got a few empty places, but they are coming in every day. But the ones that are coming in now are really, really in a bad way. Lots of bad injuries, a lot with maggots. Not good, some are dying, so it's not, it's not very good at the moment. And they're the ones that are still in the house because they need like intensive care. They're on medication. I mean, I was up till half past one uh, Monday night last week to getting maggots out of a hedgehog. Uh, sometimes I have to, they're so bad, I have to go straight to the vets, have them put to sleep. Um, but these are the ones that are more or less better and they are now racing for, waiting for release except for ones like this one, one with his only one eye and he's old as well and so he's going to go into an enclosed garden. So I have uh, one or two amputees which go into again enclosed gardens. They don't go back into the wild but it's, they have as good as, you know, pick gardens that are fully um, enclosed and well-established gardens so they can do all the foraging and you know they can have a happy life um, even though they can't get out of that garden but it's you know big enough for them. Well it's 24 hours a day. Uh, an early start every morning, in fact I was up half past five this morning but it's generally about six o'clock I get up because everyone has to be cleaned out every day because the water wall poo, believe me, um, the trash it all and then, um, and then of course, I'm checking gardens out because if it's in a garden, I check it out first. I do fundraising constantly, so doing talks, uh, 
do the fairs and things like I was yesterday at a stall. Um, soon, will be soon, I'll be getting the little hoglets in. Unfortunately, mums can get killed and they come out and people find them and bring them to me. And they can be anything from a few hours old up to, you know, a couple of weeks, well, whatever. But they can be really, really tiny and uh, then I have to hand feed them. Luckily, I don't have to do it through the night, but I usually finish at one o'clock in the morning, uh, the last feed, and then start again at six in the morning, and uh, then feed during the day. But because a hedgehog's nocturnal, the mum is out foraging at night time, so she's not actually feeding them. So that's one good thing, but it is pretty intensive. Well, the hedgehogs come from all over, not just Hull. In fact, sometimes quite away from Hull. Some come from gardens, people find them in the gardens. Often people find them walking the dogs, you know, if they're going through fields, you know, or lanes, they find them. I, actually, dogs are quite good at finding sick hedgehogs because they, they, they sniff them out and um, the people see them and they're out during the day because if they are out during the day, this is the, hog, the hedgehogs, there's something wrong with them. A lot of different accidents, strimmer, it's one of the bad ones up to now. Lots of people use um, weed and feed in the garden. They don't realise they're actually killing the hedgehogs. They don't have to eat anything. They just absorb it through the body. Um, there's ponds. Hundreds and hundreds die in ponds. They can swim, but they can't swim forever. And if they can't get out, if, if it's one of these what are called dangerous ponds, then they will die. They will drown. Because they're out at night, People don't find them till the next day, by then it's too late. Um, as I say, netting is another thing. They get caught in, people put netting on the fruits and that, they get caught in it. Um, there's just all sorts, there's just so many things that happen that we've done that causes these problems. I do get a lot with these back leg injuries and I do suspect foxes do that. Not all of them, but foxes do, they tend to grab at them as they run away and they cause this damage to the legs and that's why they end up having them amputated. If it's a back leg, back leg they can be okay, front leg they, they can't cope with the front leg missing or it'd be very very difficult for them to cope. But uh, generally it's very rare it's the front leg, it's usually the back leg anyway and they can cope with three legs. What happens in the winter time is uh, they have a late bit, late litter and they cannot survive the winter they cannot hibernate so they they struggle and lots of people find them so i get a lot of awesome juveniles and they're with me all the winter and then i feed them they are sickly as well they are just healthy hedgehogs unfortunately um but those that survive they release in the spring um so they're with me quite a long time but the ones that come in as now it depends on the severity what's wrong with them some are not so bad they can be with me a few weeks some will be with me a few months it depends on the severity of their injuries or like i've got I had one uh, fall into an oil pit and it's absolutely covered in oil i've got most of it off now but i'm not very happy yet for it to go out because it's still got oil on its skin um, so it's, it, it does vary, it depends on what's the, uh, the problem in the first place, that's how long they're, it's, they're, they're with me. I take in approximately, I would say, up to 200 a year. Over the winter, I generally have over 100 over winter. Uh, they're with me, as I say, over winter. Then as I release them as now, but then there's more coming in. So I would, I would imagine it will be about 200 over the whole year.